Com esse pacotinho. Esse é um pacotinho. Esse é um pacotinho. Hello guys, how are you doing? Hope you're well. Welcome to Sean Vlog, my daily vlogs here in Brazil. Me and Tech are about to go out. I want to talk about the vlog that I posted the other day because a lot of people commented. I showed a jacket which was in the decathlon shop and I kind of made fun of it a little bit because like, well, what are you going to do with a jacket here in Brazil? But the truth is, it's very, very cold in a lot of places in Brazil right now. A lot of people have sent in comments saying where they are in Brazil, especially in the south right now, temperatures are like minus two, minus three degrees. And in fact, my sister-in-law who lives in Curitiba sent us a photo of the main kind of greenhouse there, which is all covered in frost and ice on the ground. It's like properly cold there. And I'm talking, it's like as cold as Scotland in the winter in the south of Brazil. So it's an interesting point, guys. Brazil does get cold in the winter, really cold. You get snow and ice here just the same. In the winter here, which is the opposite of the winter in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, it gets really, really cold throughout Brazil. Even here in Vitoria right now, we have closed all the doors and turn the fans off because it is really quite chilly. It's like 15, 16 degrees. I'm feeling pretty cold in the house. For any of you guys coming to the Olympics this year from abroad, just bear in mind it is winter at the moment and August will be just kind of the end of winter, but still winter and Rio de Janeiro can be pretty cold right now. I've heard from friends who live there that over the last kind of week or two, it's been kind of 16, 17 degrees and definitely not weather to go anywhere near a beach. It's been properly chilly there as well. So if anyone coming to the Olympics, Take note, it gets cold. And I was wrong to make fun of people about having jackets here in Brazil because it is cold and I am cold right now. I don't know if you guys know what pastels are. If you're from Brazil, you obviously will know what a pastel is. Pastels are deep fried parcels pastels. of one pastel, two pastéis. <laughs> they are basically deep fried parcels of food. So it's like a, pa a pastry that's deep fried and inside you fill it with different foods. Anything you want. Uh, we've come to this restaurant here in Vitoria, this place that sells pastels and it's called Pastelão. Pastelão de pacotinho. Do pacot. So is that? Yeah. They have all different types of pastels. You can fill them with literally anything you want. And it's quite a Brazilian thing. So you get anything you want in these pastéis. Cheese, chicken, calabresa, meat. And you can get things that are like mixed all together. We got it. This thing is I massive. I don't even know how to eat this. <laughs> In Scotland, right? When you get something big like that, you're gonna eat. We have this saying, it's called, you could choke a donkey with that. You could literally choke a horse with this. It's massive. That's probably the biggest pastel I've ever seen. I don't even know where to start with it. Can you put some olive oil for me on that? And some mayonnaise as well. I've finished and I've made a huge mess all over the table and on my jeans. I always make a mess. I always tend to get the seafood pastels, pastéis. Usually prawns, I really like the prawn ones, but they didn't have any there, so I had bacalhau, which is like salt cod. Really, really good. We're gonna go to the feirinha in our neighborhood and get some, I don't know what we're gonna get actually. There's like a little circle roundabout near where we live. Usually sell quite good cakes and stuff. We are back from the feirinha, the little fair. Uh, we bought docinhos. <laughs> back from feirinha and bought docinhos. Basically like dessert treats. Uh, I got that white one over there, which is made out of what they call here leche nino, which is like if you've had any kids recently, you'll have like baby milk powder, powdered baby milk, is that what you call it? So this stuff is basically made out of that and it tastes amazing. It's like really sweet milk. So yeah, we're gonna get tuck into these and we're gonna watch another episode of The Walking Dead. Uh, we are just absolutely loving The Walking Dead right now. I can't believe it's taken us so long to watch The Walking Dead. Like we only just started it. I can't believe we've been missing all these years. So, no spoilers. No spoilers for us. 
I want you to talk about something that I find is quite interesting. Something in Portuguese which is really difficult for me to say is the thing that you guys put at the end of your words. Oh. It's a word that's really difficult for anyone who is an English speaker to say this oh because it's a nasal sound so if I do that maybe I can say it better. Oh. 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 It's difficult. It's really really difficult to say. Uh, and if you guys were watching there when I went out for dinner we went to pastel lão. It means like big pastel. And you guys put that on the end of so many different words here in Brazil. And it's interesting. It's just difficult for me to say. And also inho as well. Now there's loads of words here in Portuguese which end in inho. Now inho is basically the same idea as ao but small. So anything that with the word inho and generally means that the thing is small. I've got a good example. Anybody who likes football from around the world will know who Ronaldinho is. The end part of his name inho basically means it's he is we Ronaldo. Small Ronaldo. <laughs> is that right? It kind of makes sense. For any English speaker, this is so difficult to say, like, you're gonna end up laughing at me so much trying to say, oh. It's one of those things that you guys have in Portuguese that simply does not exist in English anywhere. Uh, it's, it's like a sound that we just don't make in the English language. And I know there's lots of sounds in the English language that you guys don't say. Like when you put the T and H together, for example, to make the sound. You guys don't say that in uh, Portuguese, so it's difficult for you. But for me, oh, it's really difficult. I kind of get the hang of it now, but it took me a long time to say anything with the word oh in it, and I still don't do it right, so please don't make any fun of me down below. Uh, but yeah, the differences in languages between English and Portuguese, there's so many different funny things like that. Anyway, I'm gonna sign off for tonight. I hope you guys have a great weekend, and I'll catch you again really soon. So take care, have a good night.